Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are discussing something that could either be a total nothing burger, a small little blip footnote in the development of the AI space, or could be extremely significant. Although it's very different, it has a little bit of the feel of the AI wearables pop that happened last year. Although I think that there might be reasons to be a little bit more optimistic just in terms of how well this trend matches the actual moment than we were back then. What I'm talking about, of course, is AI browsers. This week, we had the launch of one, rumors of another, and a third in beta starting to get responses as well. Now, what this is all about and the context that makes this matter is, of course, the agentification of everything, including the very way we use the internet. We are speedrunning the move from theory to practice when it comes to agents. It was just months ago that we got Anthropic's computer use mode, and shortly after that, OpenAI's first version of Operator, the Chinese agent Manus picked up some viral interest, and a common thread in all of these was that they were at core about deploying an agent to interact with the web and the internet in a way that you used to. In other words, there is a vector of agentic competition that is structurally reimagining how we interact with the web because instead of us interacting with the web, it is us deploying agents to interact with the web on our behalf. Now, one could argue that the rise of AI search, both in the form of AI overviews on Google, as well as just the shift away from traditional search behavior to trying to get answers in platforms like ChatGPT, is also part of this trend of deploying an agent or an AI or an LLM to do your interneting for you rather than doing your interneting yourself. But let's talk about what was actually announced this week or what was rumored this week, and then we'll talk a little bit more about both the reactions and the implications. First of all, we got a report. As early as last fall, we started to get hints that OpenAI was considering taking Google on on their own territory with a browser. Back in November, the information reported that they had actually prototyped a browser and that they had started to explore different types of deals that could power search features for things like travel, food, and real estate. At the time, the information wrote, OpenAI could decide not to launch the browser, though earlier this year it hired two people who were instrumental in the development of Google's Chrome browser. Well, this week, we got a report from Reuters that OpenAI is in fact planning on releasing that browser in the coming weeks. TechCrunch writes, OpenAI's browser is said to use AI to rethink how users browse the web. Supposedly, the browser keeps some user interactions inside ChatGPT instead of linking out to websites. Reuters reports that OpenAI's browser may integrate Operator, the company's web browsing AI agent, as a key feature. So that was in the rumor column, but then we actually got a launch as well. Perplexity launched what they called a Comet. In their announcement tweet, they said, Comet is a browser that's designed to be a thought partner and assistant for every aspect of your digital life, work, and personal. Now, lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the browser company, who had previously made Arc Browser, also has something similar called Dia that's in early access beta right now. These guys were technically first to market in June, but like I said, because it's currently behind beta, people haven't had as many reps with it yet. So let's look into Perplexity's Comet to try to get a sense of what these types of browsers might actually include. Perplexity CEO Aravan Srinivas writes, Comet is a web browser built for today's internet. In the last 30 years, the internet has evolved from something we simply browse or search. The internet is where we live, work, and connect. It's also where we ask questions. Curious minds have questions everywhere, and they'd find answers on every page and every idea through every task. Yet we've been trapped in long lines of tabs and hyperlinks, disjointed experiences that interrupt our natural flow of thought. In other words, the internet has become humanity's extended mind, while our tools for using it remain primitive. Our interface for the web should be as fluid and responsive as human thought itself. We built Comet to let the internet do what it has been begging to do, to amplify our intelligence. Comet powers a shift from browsing to thinking. Tabs that piled up waiting for you to return now join one intelligent interface that understands how your mind works. Context switching between dozens of applications, sites, and interfaces has stolen the focus and flow that bring joy to our work and fuel our curiosity. Comet transforms entire browsing sessions into single, seamless interactions, collapsing complex workflows into fluid conversations. Ask Comet to book a meeting or send an email based on something you saw. Ask Comet to buy something you forgot. Ask Comet to brief you for your day. Comet transforms any web page into a portal of curiosity. Highlight any text to get instant explanations. Explore tangential ideas without losing your original context. Ask specialized questions or broad ones. Comet understands that genuine curiosity doesn't follow predetermined paths. With our own roadmap and with every new advancement in AI, we will continue to launch new features and functionality for Comet. Improve experiences based on your feedback and focus relentlessly as we always have on building accurate and trustworthy AI that fuels human curiosity. The future belongs to the people who never stop asking questions.
A great mission statement, but what actually is this thing? Well, one either accurate or potentially reductive way to look at it, depending on your point of view, is to view this as a browser with an agentic assistant strapped onto it. Perplexity's version of the AI browser puts the agent in a sidebar, so you can call it up at any moment without switching windows. It can see all the tabs you're working in and take actions on any of them, so theoretically it can do anything you ask it to on the web. Perplexity demoed the agent constructing a walking tour based on a map the user was looking at and generating a summary of a Slack window. Their browser also has voice mode enabled, so they showed a user pulling up a YouTube video based on verbal instructions. Now, none of the individual pieces then are all that new, but the change in form factor is what matters. Operator, for example, has done all of its web-based tasks in a cloud sandbox. That meant that workflow was very segmented between the user and the agent. It was mostly useful if you wanted to be able to complete a task end-to-end, -end, rather than being able to seamlessly hand control back and forth between user and agent. Comet and these native AI browsers then seem far more suited to being able to complete a task when you're already halfway through or step in to provide some help. For example, it's easier to use Comet as an assistant to help draft an email in a web client. Now, another small but powerful feature is that Comet is designed with multi-agent architecture. That means it can fire off multiple agents to complete subtasks, working in their own tabs in the background. Everything is also hosted natively in the browser, so Comet has full access to everything you're signed into during the session. All of this adds up to, theoretically, a feeling that isn't just an assistant bolted onto a browser, but an actually fully integrated experience, where the way that you browse the web involves having access to this intelligent Sherpa or guide that you can ask about anything that you're interacting with and actually have help you on whatever it is you need help with. Now, Dia, from what we know so far, is very much on the same page. They introduced a similar interface upgrade this week that they're calling inline browsing. CEO Josh Miller wrote, Now Dia opens web pages within your AI chat threads, blurring the lines between three categories of software, a web browser, a search engine, and AI chat. He continues, by building AI chat on top of a browser, not as a separate product, you get a more fluid thinking environment. AI and the web fuse together as one. I know that sounds pretentious, but it's the best way to describe the feeling of inline browsing. Web pages are just the beginning. Dia can render all kinds of interactive embeds in line. Today, that means you can consider purchases without leaving chat. Tomorrow, Toby's investment in MCP might mean shopping in line too with dynamic store embeds. A new internet is coming. Now, while we don't have access to OpenAI's forthcoming browser, I get that they're exploring pretty similar space. Now, right now, access to these tools is a little bit limited. Comet, for example, although generally available, is locked behind Perplexity's premium tier, which is $200 a month. So there are only a few people who've played around with it. Still, among those who have, the response so far is pretty positive. Olivia Moore of Andreessen Horowitz posted, First test of Perplexity's new agentic browser, Comet. It pulled a list of all my email newsletters and unsubscribed from the specific ones I asked it to. In my opinion, this is much more useful than what we've seen from OpenAI's operator or even Google's Project Mariner, which is their own agentic browser and beta. The fact that it can actually do things for you within the application that hold all your data and context is really helpful. She continued some of my other favorite use cases, checked into an upcoming flight, it fills in confirm code, last name, etc., looks for any unpaid build in my inbox, filtered my LinkedIn request by who I should accept. It's a tough grader. AI entrepreneur Nathan Snell writes, Holy crap, Perplexity's Comet browser is insane. Operator was a total dud, Manus is better, but meh. I asked it to duplicate a meta campaign for me, no problem, all automated. Running through some additional example use cases, he continued, Automated audit of Ridge's cart, handling it like a champ. It's legit doing the things, adding items to the cart, seeing what changes. Brief break for dinner, but also Comet could totally order delivery to my house. If my wife and kids weren't already waiting for me, I'd do it. Honestly, this is what I had hoped Operator was. Feels like the 4.0 image gen release. Kudos to Perplexity. So again, if none of the exact use cases or features here are all that new to you, I don't think that's a wrong assessment. What matters is the idea of integration of agentic experiences as part of our core platform experiences. And clearly these entrepreneurs are thinking about this as more than just a quote-unquote web browser. Back in March, Perplexity CEO Aravan Trinavas said that his goal with Comet was to quote, develop an operating system with which you can do almost everything. In short, this is another step in the path towards redesigning the interface for a world where AI agents, rather than humans, are the ones interacting with computers. Matthew Berman of Future Forward referred to this as vibe browsing, which is certainly of the current zeitgeist. He said, I see a glimpse into the future in which web browsing is completely different. It's me tasking an agent to go and browse the web on my behalf. And in fact, I think that that's really helpful because part of the issue with thinking about this future is the term browsing the web itself. At this point, very little of our time on the internet is spent clicking around looking for content to read. Instead, the web has become the portal to a ton of administrative, shopping, and productivity tasks. 
AI browsers then aren't powerful because they can read and summarize websites for you. They're powerful, at least potentially, because they can act as generalized automation tools for web applications. Berman commented that by using an agent to interact with the web, quote, I'm going to be able to do so much more in parallel. I can kick off multiple agents. I can have scheduled agents. They can all run at the same time and just get so much more done. I don't want to go through the process of booking a flight. I don't want to put together groceries. I don't want to do a lot of things that I do on the internet every day. I want an agent to do it for me. Now, you've probably frequently heard me be skeptical of many of those use cases, but I'm certainly open to the idea that that calculus changes if they're just embedded obvious features of a more generalized experience like a browser or an operating system. Alex Gravely, one of the developers of Comment, wrote, Comment is the first big step in merging AGI into daily life, right from the search bar. Some people definitely get the significance and see how central to the AI battle this is going to be. Signal writes, this is the oldest play in tech. Find product market fit with a single killer use case, then vertically integrate and horizontally expand until you control the interface layer itself. From app to platform, once you own the interface, you own the defaults. Welcome to the next generation of browser wars. Noah Zender writes, most people are only now realizing this was inevitable. This is the exact same playbook from the 1990s browser wars, but with 100x bigger stakes. Your browser is the internet. Back then, it was control the browser, control web traffic, control ad revenue. Now, it's control the browser, control AI defaults, control how humanity interfaces with intelligence. Your browser is about to become your AI agent manager, the context controller, and the closest thing to an assistant. The company that wins this controls the next computing paradigm. In other words, friends, big stakes from humble origins. My finger is hovering over the upgrade button to buy that perplexity $200 plan to test this out. If I do so, you will certainly be hearing about it in the week to come. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. I appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.